Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over some of the oxygen not included basics. Today we're going to be going over pipelines to get it started. This is going to be a pipeline. We have the uh, gas variant, liquid variant, and the solid variant. All of these pipelines work somewhat similarly and have the same mechanics in the game. There are the different variations of the bridge. However, they all look and work the same exact way. Of course, those are the pipelines. Those are the bridges. They're all the same equivalent of each other. The gas pump, liquid pump are the same variations of each other for the respective elements as this pumps out liquids, this pumps out gases. And for the solids, we have the auto sweeper loader combo as this picks up solid items in the radius and the loader puts it onto the rail. Although the liquid and gas pumps automatically put it on the rail, the solids is a two-part process. However, all things considered, it's 240 watts for the individual pieces. These two work as a set. This is 240, that's 240. Now, to get it started, we're going to be using gas pumps and liquid pumps for the majority of our examples, but all the mechanics are going to work for all variations, liquid gas or solid, for the pipeline basics. We'll talk about how things work. We'll go over the output and building intakes and how these variations work with each other. So, the very first setup is going to be a gas pump connected via pipeline to a vent. And we'll let this run. Now that we turn this on, you can see that the gas pump is going to be moving gases along the pipeline going to the building intake. Now the gas pump is what you need to start capturing the gas and that comes out of the output pipe. The output pipe in green right here is going to be called a producer. This is basically what produces the contents of the element onto the respective lines, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas. And this is going to be what puts the resources into the pipeline. This is going to feed into the building intake in white over here. And this is what we would call a consumer. The producer produces the element and then it will move magically to the consumer in the pipeline. This is going to work in all cases. And a good rule of thumb when making your pipeline, if you guys are worried about the spaghetti or things like that, usually having the producers on one side and consumers on one side is usually a good rule of thumb so that the pipelines always work. Now in our next example over here, we're going to be showing you what happens if you have the producers produce in the same line and you draw a straight shot like so. As you can see, once we start, both of the pumps are active and we're going to be moving both the uh, pump contents to the right. However, the moment the left side pumps gas contents override the output pipe of the second pipe, you can see that it's no longer actually working. That's because when there is a gas present on the output pipe, the building in and of itself is not able to actually put any element on the pipeline because of a gas already present. That means that if you have a output producer on a pipeline first, has the ability to put the contents on that pipe, and then that pipe goes over another producer output, that producer has priority, meaning that this pump will have to yield, but however, because it's yielding, it's not able to actually function. This is a problem, especially if you have generators that produce a gas and because you're not allowing the waste product to dispel from, let's say, a natural gas generator, as if this was this carbon dioxide on the natural gas generator, if this was CO2 on the line and this was not able to dispel the CO2 from the generator, the generator would cease to function. And because of that, if you guys want to run a line like this, you're better off with a design like the one on the right. Because we have the pump on the left side on a bridge bridging onto the pipeline on the right, we actually combine the contents assuming they're the same element. If they were not the same element, we would actually have the left pump stop functioning as it will wait for a gap in the pipeline to move said element. Otherwise, if these are always the same element being pumped up, you could see that our 500 gram bubbles become a 1000 gram bubble instead. That's because the gas pumps only pump at a rate of 500, while the pipeline maximum is at 1000. 
So by doing a pipeline bridge like this, this is going to be how you have both the pumps work, especially if you're using this for generators. So watch out where you run a pipeline through the output pipe. This blocks off the buildings a lot of the times. That is only if you are not using a bridge. That rule we just described of how that interaction works is only unique to the buildings. However, if you actually have a bridge outtake instead, we get a different response. What happens in here is that you could see that the top pump just pumps bypasses through, but the bottom pump, because it's feeding into a bridge, actually bridges on. This is the same thing as what's happening on the good example on the right side right here. But the other thing about this is that the bottom pump is always feeding into the bridge because the bridge always has priority on the consumer. And this is true with all consumer intake pipes right here. If we have a intake before another intake, the first intake in line in queue is always going to have priority. That means that as long as there's space up top, the bridge will always merge the gas bubbles if they're the same element and always has priority. Now to show you what happens if we already have full pipelines, liquid pipes pump full bubbles all the time in their pipelines. As you can see, it's the same element. And if there is no space for the element, what happens is that they overflow from the bridge and go out into the second intake. That means that the bridge is priority if there is room. However, if there's no space, they will continue flowing along the pipeline to the second consumer. And if that fills up, you could keep going with a third, fourth, and fifth. This is a very good method to prioritize certain buildings over others so that if you need to feed into water into your oxygen producing plants you might want to feed water into that then maybe let's say an ice machine or another consumer of water instead that way you'll always have oxygen that is prioritized over the other functional buildings that require the same elements and is going to be a good way for you guys to prefer certain buildings over others you guys could always use a bridge as a priority and because of that, you guys could use this as a powerless option to prioritize certain buildings. The next example we're going to have is what happens if you just put the pipelines together into a single consumer. As you can see here, both the producers are producing. However, they're taking turns at the intersection in the road because there's no pipeline priorities here. Typically, what you have in is at the intersection, the bubbles take turns. And if you're doing it from a producer standpoint where you have multiple producers feeding into a single or less than the amount of producers that you have, they take the turns on the pipelines. Now, for that same thing, what happens if you have multiple consumers and only one producer? As you can see, we have an intersection in the pipeline. They are taking turns. They went bottom first, middle second, and then top last. And this bubble is actually going to be moving down as well as it's going to be taking turns and distributing every single bubble to a different consumer. That's because at an intersection, they will evenly distribute the individual bubbles. Now, that being said, depending on if it's, this is a liquid, solid or gas pipeline, you might not have your bubbles topped off. So there may be variance. So they do not look at volume. Instead, they look at the individual packets. Because of that, you're going to get even distribution, assuming the packets are the same size. But they will always distribute in the same pattern. If you were to stop and then turn it on again, it will continue from where it leaves off. Meaning that it will not always go right side first or anything like that. It's going to prioritize where the pattern left off last. Now that's with a single intersection. What happens if you have a double? On our example right here, you could see that the first intersection splits the packets 50-50. Meaning half goes up, half goes bottom. But at the second intersection, at the bottom intersection, it does the same thing. Actively meaning that this gets 50% of the gas, this gets 25%, and this also gets 25, assuming all the packets are the same size. But by doing the intersections like so, you could kind of split up the gas by volume and prioritize certain lines above others. However, this also allows the gas to be somewhat evenly distributed. Now over here, we have the same overflow example. Basically, the bridge takes this as priority. The bottom is going to actually max pressurize. What happens when that happens? 
what happens is, is that they're going to start to overflow. This is what you call the overflow mechanic. Your initial consumer needs the resources. The gas instead overflows to the second consumer. As long as the first consumer doesn't have space anymore, it's going to bypass that and overflow. This overflow mechanic is great, especially in a closed bathroom situation where the pee water comes in, gets filtered, and you guys want to prioritize your bathrooms first. However, because you generate more water than you guys put in, there's going to be extra pee water, in which case we have an overflow set up here feeding into some liquid reservoirs this allows us to deal with the extra pee water and prioritizing the bathroom so that they're always topped off this overflow build with the bridge right here is great for that type of design if you guys want to prioritize certain builds now that being said that's the overflow setup how do we overflow and connect to a loop that's typically going to be something for an aqua tuner setup because of how the pipeline right here flows into a aqua tuner sometimes because of the automation you want to disable it because the water is already chilled this usually means that your aqua tuner did its job already and chilled the environment that you're running the pipes through to the point where there's no more heat being absorbed by the cold medium Sometimes because of that, you don't want the liquids to break because it may solidify after being chilled for so long. You guys need an overflow setup. This is going to be your typical aqua tuner overflow set. After the intake, you move down with the output pipe of the aqua tuner moving down as well. You create a bridge right here so that you guys could have the liquids continuously move into the loop while not interrupting the pipeline this is going to be the typical design everything from this part to this part could be redesigned into whatever you needed to do but for the most case it's a loop following the same rule of thumb we mentioned earlier with the consumers on one side and producers on the other because of how the bridge works it's not a pipeline so it's a green green and then we have a white white and that's how this looks like. now that being said i talked about how the bridge is going to yield to the pipeline this usually means that you could create a design like this where you have a closed loop process that you might have automation to remove the gas on the other side once it's once a certain condition is met now this means that this pump right here is moving in polluted oxygen but once the loop is filled up it's going to stop pumping that's because it's yielding for empty space this is a great way to create some of the designs for filters as the basis of the mechanical filter works very similarly we are able to move gases in as long as it's the same element and if we put a bypass up top we would have what's called an overflow bridge setup and that's actually the basis of the mechanical filter if you guys want to learn more about that we'll leave a link to the video in the description down below but guys that has been a lot of the uh, pipeline basics for the game of oxygen not included everything we went over is applicable to the solid liquids and gases as long as it has the output pipe and the building intake everything that we did works for all of the variations regardless of if it's solid liquid or gas as we showed you that there are the equivalents for that right there if you guys have any questions about any of the pipeline mechanics we've gone over or some of the basic pipeline designs we showed you guys leave a comment down below hope you guys enjoyed today's video and of course guys don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys